Hello, my name is Antonio Scurati. I am 50 years old and I live in Milano. These two characteristics define the way I watched the pandemic. Uh, because Milano uh, is part of Lombardia, a small area which was the first place in the Western world to be struck by the pandemic, the front line of the pandemic in the Western world. Uh, we, softer, we suffered uh, almost 20,000 deaths in this small area. Uh, we were just mm, uh, swept away by this wave of disease, infection, uh, in a very dramatic way. But Milano is also an affluent city, uh, the industrial capital uh, and financial capital of Italy. It's a city uh, well known all over the world for its brilliant uh, way of life. It's the city of Martini, it's the city who invented the happy hour, it's the city of fashion, design, uh, <clears throat> the new Dolce Vita in my country. And by having 50 years old, I belong to the uh, most lucky generation of history, of universal history. Uh, I belong to the most um, wealthy, uh, most uh, safe, uh, long-lived, uh, best-dressed, best food uh, generation was ever uh, lived on earth compared to any other uh, place of the world and any other um, era of our history. And so if you mm, uh, uh, mix these two things, uh, you can imagine uh, what kind of uh, um, insane experience has been for us the pandemic. Uh, the point is not if we, we were ready to face it. Uh, we weren't, but nobody uh, was. The point is that we were not mature to face it. We were immature. We reached the age of 50 uh, by living uh, in a world where human suffering, uh, the this destruction of lives and things was always a mediated experience. Uh, the first war of our life for my generation of Western European was a night watching TV. The night between uh, January 17, 18, 1999, when the Western coalition uh, bombed Baghdad in the first Gulf War and in our name and for me and for the 20, 20 years old men and women of my generation even if we were, we were against the war and I was against the war um, no matter uh, for us while thousands of people were dying under the bombing I was watching television, drinking a cold beer. Uh, that's what experience meant for me and for the people of my generation. And that's why when we uh, arrived to the point when um, mass destruction of lives, when, when um, death on a huge scale when a um, historical tragedy uh, reached us, we were just immature to face it. We had no uh, tragic sense of life. Uh, we were uh, not used to think of our lives in, in terms of historical time. We lived the first 50 years of our life 
in the time of the chronicle, I call it, day by day, day by day, as individual, uh, never as uh, a vol, never as a nation, never as a state, never as a community. And these things um, go together. Uh, the feeling of his, an historical time, uh, the feeling to be part of a political community, the feeling that uh, human suffering is something that uh, involves all of us and not uh, a TV show. And uh, during the two months of the lockdown here in my studio, many times I told to myself that that was the end of an era the era of inexperience, I call it. And there was the beginning of a new, of a new era. Uh, suddenly, we found ourselves the wealthiest, the richest, uh, the long-lived, the, the best um, fit and the, the, uh, the healthiest of all times, queuing for the bread. But then, now, uh, they're opening everything, and I see this picture of one kilometer of people queuing, not for the bread, but to be able to enter the uh, Zara uh, boutique uh, department store for clothes. Uh, in the first day of reopening. And so I asked to myself, maybe I was wrong. Maybe nothing is going to change. Maybe it's not the beginning of a new era. Maybe it's just uh, the world we lived in uh, so far, but getting a little worse. I don't know. I hope not, but I'm afraid that could be that way. Bye-bye.